Hi everybody, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting with me today. So in this video, I want to talk more about the Madeline Stearns case and my theory or why I think they're taken so long to press charges against anyone for Madeline's unaliven. Um, personally, I believe Stefan Stearns is responsible for her unaliven. I think he did it. Um, I know that it's not the only possibility. I know there are other possibilities. There are, you know, Jen could have done it. Uh, he could have had a friend that did it. He could have um, brought him, he could have brought her to somebody after the birthday party. You just don't know. And we don't know. It could have been something really sick. And, um, I mean, it is sick. It, everything about this is sick, but he could have, um, it could have been some deal he made with somebody on the dark web, like somebody who wants a fresh 13 year old or whatever, you know, you don't never know what these perverts are thinking. And it's just, any sick scenario you can come up with is possible with these kinds of kind of sickos. But I, um, I believe it was him because it's like, for me, it's Occam's razor. It's, you know, if you hear hoofbeats in Central Park, think horses, not zebras, you know, it's the most logical explanation is usually the answer. That's not always the case. And uh, this situation doesn't have one one logical answer because I don't want to sit here and, and speculate that a mom could do this, but you know, a mom could. Um, but anyway, I don't want to speculate and say she did, but it could be Jen. It could be Anybody that was at that birthday party, it could be anybody, it could be a friend of his that he met and, and uh, or that he uh, had his little, his little perverted parties with or whatever, if he did that, you know, um, you just never know. And, um, but anyway, I, I think it's him. I think he did it. And... We're going to know soon enough. We're going to know soon enough. But I wanted to talk, and I've talked about this a lot on my channel. And I know if you're, you've are you been on my channel and watched my other videos about Madeline, you're probably thinking, oh, God, she's going to talk about it again. I'm so sick of her. You know, and I, I know some people may be feeling that way. And if you do, I do apologize for this. But this is just something that's so important to me, um, this case, that I can't stop talking about it. And... um and I just look back on this other case and think, this is why they're taking their time. They want to be extra careful. And the reason is, and I've said this before, the last time Central Florida had a high profile child unaliven, the unaliver walked. She went free. And I'm talking, of course, about um, Casey Anthony for the unaliven of Kaylee Anthony. Um, I remember watching Nancy Grace and they were showing some evidence and talking about evidence they had in the case. And me and Eric were, would be watching her and, and be like, that's, hopefully they have more than that. I hope they have more than that because what she's talking about, that's just not gonna be enough. Not a death penalty case. If they weren't going for the death penalty, they may have found her guilty, but, um, juries are not to say that they're not careful in a, in a non-death penalty case, but, you know, you don't want to sentence someone to death if there's any doubt at all, and they didn't prove it. They didn't prove she was guilty of what we all know she did. There's a difference between guilty and innocent. There really is. And she, she walked, she walked. And um, I was saying, you know, all along since I saw that stuff on Nancy Grace, I'm like, 
I hope they, that, okay, so they have a smoking gun that they're not telling us about. They got a smoking gun. They did not have a smoking gun. It was kind of ridiculous what they had, but everything was refuted. Everything was like, just everything the defense, the defense attorney argued was like valid. He was like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I don't want to side with someone I know who killed her child, but at the same time, we've got to, you know, uh, the law is, is reason free from passion, you know, and, um, and that's true. Who said that? The law is reason free from passion. One of those guys said it, but and, but that is what the law is. And you have to set aside your emotional feelings. Like your I want this woman to die for killing her baby. You know, you've got to put that emotion aside and look at things logically and use your brain. And when you look at the evidence and you put all that other emotion, emotion aside, like they're not proving it. We know she did it, but we can't prove it. You know, it doesn't matter what you know, what matters is what you can prove in a court, court of law. So yeah, they, um, they didn't prove it. The evidence they had was, was nonsense. Um, and based on what they've said on, like I've watched court TV, I've watched a couple other things, based on what they're saying so far, not that they're releasing a lot of information, but just from what we know, all they have is circumstantial evidence. That's all they had for Casey Anthony was circumstantial evidence, and she walked. Now, um, Ste Stephen Stearns isn't walking anywhere. They've got those 60 other charges that he most definitely is going to be found guilty of. So he is, he's going to prison for life. But that doesn't get Madeline justice. Nothing gets her justice. There's really no such thing as justice because at the end of the day, the little girl has been a b u s e d since she was at least eight years old possibly younger and then she was killed there's no real justice but as much justice as we can get for her we want to get for her so yeah he's going he's gonna serve the rest of his life for these 60 charges he's currently charged with, it, it, definitely. But can they get him for her unaliven? Now, like I said, I believe he did it. I absolutely believe he did it. And, um, but I also understand that there are other people that could have done it and that he was covering up for him. But I believe it was him. I do believe it was him. And, The last um, date they have from the the evidence they have for all the uh, CSA, uh, the last date they had was February 26th, 2024. So sometime after midnight, after her birthday party, he was doing something. So allegedly, but yeah, he'll be found guilty of, of, all those charges, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Because, I mean, the ev this is, it's direct evidence. That is direct evidence, which is so much more powerful than circumstantial evidence. But, yeah, with the direct evidence, he's, he's nailed to the wall for that stuff. But for um, the unaliven, they can definitely, they can definitely get him convicted with what they have on him with the, the circumstantial evidence, but it would have to really, you know, it would, re and I'm sorry, the cat is, is doing something crazy, but the circumstantial evidence would really have to add up to he did it because the circumstantial evidence they had against Casey Anthony didn't get the job done, you know, and, uh, Central Florida, 
they don't want another hit like that. They don't ever, you know, they don't ever want that to happen again. A child murderer went free because they didn't do their job right. Her lawyer was better than anyone believed he would be, and the prosecuting attorneys were, they got cocky. They really thought they had her. They thought they had her because of the court of public opinion. Well, the court of public opinion doesn't matter. What we think doesn't matter. It's what the evidence says, and the evidence did not say conclusively that she was guilty. And we have to make sure, or they have to make sure what they get for Stephen Stearns or whoever they're going to charge with this unaliven, they have to make sure that it is just very convincing. Because I am, I'm pretty confident it's going to be a death penalty case for whoever did it, whether it was Stephen, who I believe it was, or Jen, or whoever it was, I believe it's going to be a death penalty case. Um, because, yeah, but that poor, poor little girl, it just is sad. It's sad. It's sad that, that Kaylee is never going to ever get justice. She's never going to get justice. And it's just the cat is stuck. She got stuck. <laughs> this isn't funny. Okay. But, so anyway, yeah, I think that they're doing a good job and we just have to put our patient pants on and uh, we just, <laughs> I'm sorry. We just have to put our patient pants on and, and just wait it out because if they hurry, they're going to do something wrong and we don't want them to do anything wrong. The state of Florida does not want another child killer to walk. Really, seriously, Florida doesn't want that. But anyway, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to discuss this a little bit more and um, I'll probably bring it up again. Uh, but anyway, that's it. Um, I'm probably going to actually just go into the whole Casey, Kaylee, Anthony thing and tell the whole story. It's a lot, it's going to be a long one because it's a long story, but, uh, it's something I've wanted to discuss. So we will get into it like in more detail very soon. Um, but I'm going to go, I am actually working on a video for the, uh, the, um, quiet on set series because I do have some things to say about that. No, Dawn, you have things to say about that. Yes, I do. I have some things to say about that. But anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to everybody later. Bye. Mm -hmm.